Today, we're revisiting the first installment of the LEGO video game series developed by Traveller's Tales. LEGO Star Wars The Video Game That's just as fun today as it was… <gasps> 17 years ago! Oh my god, I'm so f***ing old. Hitting store shelves on the 29th of March 2005, this PS2 LEGO adaptation took players through all three of the prequel films. There was also an additional bonus level from A New Hope, which gave us a little taste of things to come. The plot is a humorous retelling of the movies, and unlike later games in the series, has no dialogue. The game introduced many features that would become staples of the LEGO video games by Traveller's Tales, such as players being able to use the free play mode to replay completed levels. There's also Dexter's Diner, where players can either choose what level to enter or pay a visit to the parking lot. Here, players can view any vehicles whose parts they found and pieced together through finding mini kit canisters throughout the levels. At the start of the game, the player only has access to Chapter 1 of Episode 1, Negotiations from the Phantom Menace. However, completing that means that players have the ability to play any unlocked levels from the other two movies, in whatever order they desire. For the most part, the game uses the same background music as that of the films. However, as the game was released before Episode 3's soundtrack, those levels have a mishmash of music from the original trilogy. Hey, no complaints here. The gameplay focus was family play, and as a result doesn't include any game over scenario. You don't get much more family friendly than that, eh? Players do have a health meter that consists of four hearts, but when this depletes, then the character they're playing as simply falls apart and studs are lost instead of lives. These LEGO studs serve as the game's currency and can be collected throughout the game. They can be collected by finding them, smashing or using the force on certain objects, or defeating enemies. Studs can be spent on bonus unlockables such as new characters or cheats. There's a wide range of characters to play as in this game, with 56 overall on the PS2 version. Characters are all grouped differently, with these groups each having specific abilities and skills. For example, Jedi and Sith can use the Force, whereas droids have the ability to unlock special doors. By walking over to a friendly character, the player can switch control to them which is required to use different abilities and to complete certain puzzles. The game was a bestseller, with the PS2 version becoming the 47th best-selling game on the console with 2.5 million sales, right in between the two towers and Tekken Tag Tournament. What a place to be! The reviews were glowing, with IGN saying, it has everything a family-orientated title needs. It has personality, puzzles, cooperative modes, replay value, low violence, a lack of frustrating difficulty, and most importantly, it has Darth Vader. And that's what makes it enjoyable for adults too, because let's face it, Darth Vader makes everything better. It's a fact. Probably not everything better, IGN. We seem to remember him murdering several children. There are too many of them. What are we going to do? But anyway, what did you all think? Martin says, A true classic. I have really great memories with this game and I love the Dexter's Diner Hub. Jordan remembers, Lost many hours as a kid growing up on this. The day I unlocked Darth Vader was a great day. Frankie next, 
No exaggeration, the only PS2 game I played to the point where the discs didn't work anymore. We'd love to know how many hours it took for that to happen. Graham remembers. It spoiled Revenge of the Sith because it came before the film. True story. This was released in March, whereas the film came out in May. Ah, we knew what was going to happen anyway. And finally, Andrew recalls, going to the planet where the clones were created and finding the room that had the dance floor and random Lego characters dancing in there. My buddy and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Did you own this game? What are your memories of the first of many licensed Lego games by Traveller's Tales? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any videos in the future. Cheers!